Hi, I'm Jane Daniels. Uh, my husband Walt and I are the authors of Walkable Westchester, and we're now working on our third edition. So um, we're going to do several things this evening in this presentation. Um, you can see what I've listed there. And I thought I'd start off with a little bit of history about how the book started back in 2000. Um, that year, Walt suggested we do a hiking book uh, for Westchester. It wasn't until the following year that we really got started doing it. And so you say, why well, have a hiking book? I really, is there anything there? And the answer is, yes, there's lots. How many? Well, and when we started, we thought we would have this many parks and miles of trails and it would take us, oh, two to three years. I can assure you we were sadly mistaken because it took us until 2009 to bring out the first edition. And you can see how many parks we ended up discovering and how many miles of trails. Walt and I have lived in Westchester since 1968. And until we started the book, we weren't that familiar with a lot of geography in Westchester. And questions you can ask if I fail to tell you about where these parks are in Westchester, just raise your hand, do a chat, and Walt will tell you where they are. Okay, in 2014, when we brought out uh, the second edition, you can see the number of parks had increased. Um, yes, more miles of trails. Um, now in 2020, when we bring out the next one, um, we know there are about two, 227 parks, but I don't know yet how many miles of trails it hasn't been finalized. So that's something I can't sneak peek on you this time. So, this slide shows you the reasons why there's so many parks in Westchester. And you look at all those green spots on the map. We're so fortunate for those of us who live in Westchester that we have an incredible opportunity to go out and hike. What is amazing is that this, there's a strong desire to protect what remains of open space. So most of the parks that we have in the new, new edition are smaller. There's no big one like there was for the second edition. So this is, the, this is the cover of the second edition, and we consider it your go-to book of where to hike. There's a list of things that are in the book. Uh, the last item on there, the locator map inside the cover, wasn't in the first edition, and people asked, can you have something that shows where all the parks are located? So all of you are familiar with dust jackets on books, and it operates the same way, you just open it up, and you almost don't need an index because it gives you the page number of where the park is. So when we first started, we looked at the Westchester map and realized most of the parks are above uh, 287. And so we decided to divide them by size into sections. So you have what we call tiny treasures, pocket parks, morning strolls, afternoon jaunts, day trippers, large parks, uh, linear corridors, and then we have some trail systems as well. Since there are lots of small parks, we often would join two of them if they were adjacent, or what we call a shirt tail park, uh, and tack it onto a larger park because it happens to be nearby. Uh, it's a good way to save some space and to let people know there's something else there that might be a gem that you might like to go to. We describe trails, and we only describe them if they're blazed or named. This was a change uh, from the first edition. We were starting to run out of space, and uh, we like to call it real estate. How did you vote something? So what we do is we try to uh, mention more interesting features. The upper right-hand corner is equisitum or horsetails, that's a burden preserve. The lower right, uh, some leftover machinery from the quarry operations in Granite Knolls, which is in Yorktown. And the other one over there is the Black Mansion, the remains of it, that's in Leonard, uh, Leon Levy Preserve, that's all the way over on the easternmost part of the county in the town of Lewisboro. For those of you who are not familiar with the book, this is what the, book, the first and second editions look like. Black and white pictures, black and white and gray maps, um, 
And this time we decided we are going to do it in color. So this is what that map that you saw on the previous page, Baxter Preserve, is going to look like. It's a draft. There's some changes that we're going to be making with it, but basically that's what you're going to see. We've added 16 more pages and we're being real careful on what um, we include because with um, Rockefeller State Park adding miles of trails that are now have names, we have to include them in the book this time. So it's gonna be really nice to have color photos and maps. And one of the things that people have asked us about, do you how can we find out which places allow dogs, bikes, or handicapped accessible without leafing through the book? And so we're gonna have a table of that information. So if you've had the two previous ones, this is even better than the others. So now's the time for a poll. And is Jeremy going to put something up? Yeah, we'll, we'll post up this. Uh, uh, let me stop sharing this one here. And um, we'll get some, uh, some feedback about your preferred, uh, uh, how you like to hike, your difficulty and mileage that you uh, look for in your outings most of the time, just to get a sense of, uh, uh, yeah, how, how, what, what you're looking for in, in hikes. So. so Jeremy, who's going to report some of the results? Are you? Yep, once these come in, I'll, I'll allow a little time for, uh, for people to, to answer. And uh, uh, I get to see them come in in real time. So it's nice seeing uh, everything pop in. Uh, yeah, and we thought you would like to see the map of Westchester County again so that you have a good look at, okay, and maybe one of your questions is, what is that great big green blob that's off on the eastern part of the, the county? Or what's sticking out like kind of a nose there into the Hudson River? All right, so with uh, most people answered here, let me end that and share that for everyone. So, uh, yeah, looking here, most of you are interested in the sort of moderate difficulty, uh, either short or long. Some of you like those really long and strenuous hikes, which is great. Yeah, some nice and easy. So, uh, good mix. All right, thanks. Okay. So, on to the next. Oops. Jeremy's got to send it back to me. Okay. Oops. I can't. Hey, Jeremy, can you advance me? Can you give me the share? <laughs> We're stuck. Wait a second. All right, we got it. All right. <laughs> so these are the steps to revise Walkable Westchester, and it's not intended to have you read through all of it. It's just to give you an overview of what's required. And I can assure you there is much more detail that's required to revise a book. And we started revising in January of 2019 and we hope the book is out come fall. So, so we need to find changes and make updates. So this is, we're on to the point of where, this is how we make the book. I get reports from checkers and maintainers. They'll let me know. We're involved in making changes. I consult books and maps. And this held true definitely for the first edition. Things pop up in newspapers and newsletters and we're very glad to get those. I save them as part of my archives. People tell us about stuff. This is the um, our uh, Somers Rail Trail in Somers that goes from John F. Kennedy High School um, over to um, just a residential area. We you didn't notice a sign that there's something there. That's that particular trail is only a uh, quarter of a mile. So to keep track of these over 200 parks, I have to set up a tracking mechanism, and I'm a big fan of spreadsheets. So. I work up a spreadsheet 
and it reaches a certain point where I don't need to know who checked it or the date, but I do need to know when it goes to the uh, book designer. So behind the scenes, there's some field work. Walt and I go out, he uses a GPS, I use a, a, a wheel to take measurements, and this is a way of cross-checking each other. And you can see we weren't out at the same time doing it. <laughs> so we prep for a visit, and we visit there, and then we do things after a visit. And I'm not going to go into those de excruciating details in this um, presentation, but I can assure you it does take time. I send out people to check it. We've developed a system. I sign parks. And depending upon what they report back, we might recheck or we just simply assume what they've told us is correct. We take into consideration some editorial um, remarks, and these are the ones we have to do. So how many pages can a book have, can a park have in the book? This is an image up here. You're not intended to read it, um, but this is just one of the parks um, that we happen to have. Um, and it's a pocket park and the map takes up space and we have, want interesting history so we're going to eventually have a sidebar. How small is too small? Is a quarter of a mile too small to include? Can you tack it on to something else? Um, we don't know where we're going to put Saks Preserve but Bryan Memorial Park, the Maranek Park, is in White Plains which has very few places to walk and it's likely to go uh, be tagged on with a rail trail that is nearby. We call those shirt tail parks. What conditions do the trails need to be in? Um, what you're seeing here is Horseman's Trail that is in Tarrytown near the former Tappan Zee Bridge. And you can see that it hasn't exactly been maintained. It was dropped for the second book and guess what? It hasn't changed and it's being dropped for the, the third edition. Unfortunately, there's some places that aren't going to be ready in time. I do know that the former IBM site in Somers, which is in uh, the northern area of the county, um, the Somers Land Trust, which built trails in Anglefly, will be doing trails there, but nothing's been set up yet. So if there's the fourth edition, that will be a big trail system. Rhino Creek Preserve is also in Somers, and uh, a former golf course um, is being turned into a, a school, a private school, and it's not ready yet because they're fighting it out in the courts because the neighbor, some neighbors want it and other people don't. But it's really lovely. By the way, they're still wa they're walking there anyway. Um, including accessible trails. Uh, this one's in Rye. It's a beautiful Belvedere, a lovely paved path, um, completely handicapped, handicapped accessible, and other parks have other places that are handicapped accessible. We do note those in the little icons. So I mentioned sidebars earlier. Sometimes there's a some, um, lot of blank space. And yes, it's nice to have it in a book so people can take notes. But what happens is sometimes you need to fill that in because there's only a small portion at the top of the page. So this is, a, this is actually with Franklin Fells. Again, it's meant just simply as a, an image here, and it's in the second edition, and we'll, I think we're gonna expand it a little in the third. Photos. Surprisingly enough, these can cause a little bit of angst. Um, you wanna have high quality. You need to place the book, the, the um, photo where it's needed in the book. Uh, you don't want to have it two pages later because it happens to be you like that photo better than something else. It's artistic value. I tend to like art shots and those are included. But one thing I just learned is you have to, if you have two parks that are one in front of the other in the book, you don't have an image that's a lot alike. So the top one is in Beaver Dam Sanctuary. The other one is in Baxter, and both of those are day trippers. I can't use those. I don't know which one the um, designer will use. I suspect the one on the bottom for Baxter, and she'll pick something else uh, for uh, Beaver Dam. 
So this is the status so far. We've been um, 15 months into working on the book. And you can see there's a nice little list of stuff that's being done. We just started doing maps. Um, we are only about 30% through on the text being edited. And uh, the book designer has started the layout. What we need is a cover photo. And if any of you have seen the other two photos, they are outstanding. What do you do as the, for the third one? And we haven't found one yet that we really like. So stay tuned on that. So do people have questions? We've made a, a point of putting a spot in the thing to ask questions. And I don't know whether Walt will have anything that's on his screen that says people have questions. Uh, unmute yourself and shout out. Sounds like there aren't any. Okay, we'll keep going. So now you're gonna get the sneak peek um, and find out what's in the third edition. There are only smaller parks that we've added or shirt tails. There are new trails and there are changes in existing trails, but nothing big like angle fly, which came in on the second edition. So this is the sneak peek, I promise you. This is what Baxter Preserve will likely to look at. There might be some changes to the map coloration, but this is what you would see in the book for a chapter. And I also know that the icons will be in color. So as you can see, it's kind of an exciting change to have um, a nice photo and a color map. Give you time, a little bit of time to look at that. You won't be able to read it very well because the print is small. Okay, I'm gonna go on to the next slide. So these are some of the um, new parks that we put into the book. So daylight, the Sawmill River runs through Yonkers. It had been covered over, it was a parking lot. And over the last five to seven years, they have um, uncovered it. It's right by the railroad station. It's only a quarter mile. It's absolutely amazing what they have done. Um, they've put in, they've made it so that there's nice ripply water. There happens to be ducks that are there. You can see this was taken during the winter but I can't even imagine how many people are going to hang out on nice days once you're allowed to after the COVID-19 crisis is over. So Old Golden's Bridge um, is an area that had been uh, put under water when um, a, a dam was built. Uh, the, I think the dam is, I'm not sure where it ends up, um, but it's in uh, sort of the eastern part of Westchester. Um, and so a group of citizens got together and they decided they wanted to build a trail. Now, it doesn't cross this bridge. It's, you can see it and it does not look very inviting. Although I must say, I really like the hardware and the joints that are there on the right-hand side. Um, the Somers Rail Trail is a little further away from this. Um, but it was on a spur for the Harlem line that went over to Mayapack. So the Mahansic Trailway um, is a tiny trail and it connects, and it's a, an important connection within the town where I live. Uh, you can see the details about it. Um, I bought a lot of lumber and my joke at the, um, a lumber place, um, local one, is how many grandmothers buy uh, 50,000 pounds of lumber? Not many. I was a nice customer for them and they did, gave us a great deal on it. So this was built in um, uh, 2018 and the bridges were built in 2019. Okay, Honor True Farm Park is in Vista, which is on the very eastern edge of uh, the state and in the northern part of it. It was it was in bad shape um, and we didn't put it in in walkable too and the local people got together and fixed it up and it's back 
So just because something's deleted once that it's not in good shape doesn't mean that it can't return uh, when it's, it looks good. That bridge is typical of how the volunteers in the uh, town of Lewisboro um, use hewn logs and they're really loaded with all kinds of fungi and lichen. It's rather interesting to take a good look at them. Since the book was built, um, written in 2014, Peekskill's waterfront um, has expanded. There's this absolutely lovely long bridge that's above the, uh, goes along a bay and it goes out to another place well below the train station. And nor north of the train station, they also extended the um, uh, waterfront part uh, area where you could walk. When Walt and I were out on it one time, there was a policeman riding a bike, patrolling it, and he said that he has a job that he really likes. I mean, you get paid to ride your bike up and down this lovely path and just keep track of people. So he liked his patrol route. The Peabody Preserve was not ready for us to use in 14. Um, it's unusual because it's the only park we know about in the county that's owned by this school district. Um, and it was an old brick factory. Um, and the family turned it over to the school district who maintain it and run educational programs there. It's rather short, but you do see lots of bricks around uh, that had been made there. Mechanico Park is in Briarcliff, um, which is a little bit north of Austin and south of Tarrytown. Its trail wasn't in great shape when we did walkable one or walkable two, and it's going to be included this time. I spoke earlier about the Somers Rail Trail. What's interesting is it goes along um, DEP, which is Department of Environmental Protection for New York City, and the watersheds. If you look closely to the left of the tree with the three um, flagging tape on it, those are flat rocks. That's DEP property. To the right of it isn't. It's privately owned and if you look up in the right hand corner you will see the house that's there. It's interesting we didn't notice that until after I had taken the picture. Um, parking is limited to get onto the rail trail either through John F. Kennedy High School or near a residential area. This is a real tiny treasure, so to speak, um, only a quarter of a mile, but if you happen to like birding, there's something like a hundred species that see, are seen there in the course of a year. It's on a spit with wetlands that go on either side, and your feet don't get wet there. Uh, last winter, uh, Walt and I were out walking, um, and there's a piece of old rail bed along the, what's called the Terrytown Lakes, which used to be their reservoir, and the Andre Brook Trail connects uh, down to Sleepy Hollow High School and the Old Croton Aqueduct. When we were walking, I saw this post that, for the Green Trail, and I thought that it really certainly made use of a lot of things uh, for the bird. Um, place for a whole bunch of fungi and um, put your blazes on it. Uh, John Jay High School's cross country chair was built with um, community support. Lewisboro um, people are very active with their trails. Um, they got an easement from a neighborhood. This is the bridge that is rather impressive. Unfortunately, with COVID 19, they're uh, race that they were going to have in mid-April couldn't be built um, and it uh, couldn't be held um, and this is the last bridge that they needed to complete. It's really a neat cross-country um, course that they have. It's right behind the high school and middle school. So one of the things we visited was Charles Cook Park in the town of Cortland. That's just south of Peekskill. So it's really a side trail to the Briarcliff Peekskill Trailway and there's a fitness trail there. But also if you're walking your dog, there is a fire hydrant that's very handy for him or her. We see fire hydrants occasionally when we're out in the woods. Um, we discovered the Cross River Dam was open to the public. It had been closed because, because of 9-11 and was reopened, which we didn't realize 
it's only a third of a mile across it, but if you park at Reservoir Road in Route 22 in Katona, you have um, a one mile round trip up to the dam, across and back, which makes a nice walk. Uh, the Canada geese seem to like to sit right on the spillway. I couldn't tell if they affected the flow or not, but they clearly liked that. Okay. Um, another dam, across another dam was the Kensico Dam. That had opened, reopened, and I didn't realize that it, we could have put it in the uh, second edition. It is an amazing walk up the steps. You get your thighs really feel it, I'll tell you. You get up to the top and you walk across and then you come down the other side. Um, I imagine right now that it's a rather popular place to walk and frankly, I wouldn't go there because it's likely to be crowded. It is the start of the Bronx River Pathway, which is as you're looking at the, as I'm looking at the dam, it would be off to your left. So Sing Sing Kill Greenway um, connects the Croton Aqueduct down to a residential street. And you walk along the Sing Sing Hill. Uh, 25 years ago, some friends in our, of ours and I walked up this, hoping that eventually that they would build something along the creek. And nothing ever came about it, but th then lots, a, a large branch um, was done. You're looking at steps and you're wondering why it's accessible. It's lower down that's accessible, uh, not in this area. And it's, uh, you look up, the, um, it's very much of a gorge there and it's really pretty. Uh, the town of Cortland um, built this, uh, the, a park and trail because of a development that was across the street from it. And it connects to the Briarcliff Peekskill Trailway. So that and Cook's, uh, Cook Park will be shirt tail parks on the Briarcliff Peekskill Trailway. So we have changes that occurred. Not only do we get new book, new places, we got um, some new trails, relocated trails and reconfigured trail networks. So this is uh, the crew that was working on the Mahansic Trailway. And as you can see, we're intergenerational. I had fabulous high school kids that were working uh, to build uh, 584 feet of boardwalk. And you can see the framing ahead of this crew. Butler Memorial Sanctuary is ne located near 684. Um, they reblazed all of their trails this year and did an excellent job making it um, easier to navigate there. Um, and what's nice is if you come into the park, um, you have choices very quickly after you walk and come in the entrance trail. FDR State Park is really thought of as a picnic park. It's located in Yorktown Heights next to the Taconic. Um, trails that were built by the Trail Conference and the Friends of FDR in 15, 16, 17, uh, opened up the southern part of the park. Um, this is a, a large bridge that is over the um, Outlet Creek of Crom Pond, which is the outlet from Mahansic Lake that you can see from the Taconic. Uh, this connects over to the business district in Yorktown um, because of the Mahansic Trailway. Whoops, I went too fast. Uh, over the last three years, Hudson Highland Gateway Park has had major changes in it. Um, there are relocated trails, there's new trail sections built. And if you want a nice wor workout, it's got a lot of elevation gain and losses. It's not well known. It's a great park um, to visit. This shot of the pond that's there was one of the few snow days that we had during the winter. Marshlands Conservancy is down um, on Long Island Sound in Rye. Um, previously, they had no trails blazed and some of them are now blazed, making it easier to na navigate. The South County Trailway had a section in Elmsford where you had to go out onto busy Route 9, which was not exactly conducive if you had kids or family that were riding a bike. 
And through negotiations with um, private landowners, they were able to have a very narrow corridor that goes along the Sawmill River. And um, you are not on that busy highway. And signs direct you to how to, to uh, cross uh, Route 119. Sylvan Glen Park Preserve is located literally up the street from Walt and me. And it is an old quarry. There are new trails there. And there's a new entrance to it. So you can get to the trails in Sylvan Glen um, three different ways, which is really great. Um, unfortunately, one of the ways is closed off right now because it's through a sports complex. But um, all kinds of history that's uh, in that area. I mentioned earlier, Rockefeller State Park Preserve has a whole bunch of new trails. Um, they've always been there, but they never had names. The park has not been able to go out and put the um, posts up. Um, and they told me which, that the new map that the trail conference published is, has all the correct names. So the, you might go there during the summer and they haven't gotten the posts up. And some of them are not what I'm saying there's there. But trust me, they are, we're using the names that the park says they have to use. Okay. Taxter Ridge ended up getting a new parking lot. And I'm going to say you have to get the new book to find out some of the history of Taxter Ridge and what was there with um, Jay Gould's daughter and what she did for kids. T-Town completely changed their trail system so that people coming there who were novice hikers or walkers could walk one loop and not get lost. Um, major, that was an effort probably over four years before they finished it. They started just as Walkable 2 came, came out. Um, there was a lot of discussion and then they started in to make the changes. So now um, three will show all of the new things that they've done. Ward Pound Ridge is the biggest park in Westchester. However, I think it's competing with Rockefeller now for who has more miles. Um, they rerouted the Rocks Trail and they extended the Covered Bridge Trail. Um, those are two major changes and trail conference volunteers take care of the trails there and forever fixing things up, making sure that if you cross a stream, there's a bridge and the bridges are all numbered so they know if there's problems, go see bridge number 14. So now it's time for a poll again and any questions. Jeremy, it's back to you. Sounds good, yeah, I'll post up a poll and uh, if, if anything, uh, if you have any questions now, you can chat, uh, put them in the chat, otherwise you can wait for the end of the presentation. Uh, but yeah, to follow up on uh, what Jane was just talking about, here's a, a poll about the, the maps. Um, whether you uh, knew about our new Westchester Trails maps, um, if you already have a copy, or, or if you haven't heard about them yet. Um, once this third edition of the book comes out, the, uh, the maps and the book will uh, complement each other uh, very well. So, um, uh, yeah, always a good opportunity to, for a, a map plug. Right. All right, so yep, as these are coming in here, uh, let me get this here. All right, so um, just looking real quick, a bunch of you have, have heard about it. Some of you have uh, grabbed a copy um, uh, or you haven't quite yet. If you're uh, waiting for the, waiting to get out and, and check out the trails this upcoming season, uh, they'll, they'll be pretty handy. So thank you for that. All right, back to you, Jay. Okay, thank you. All right, we'll keep going. So people wanna know where they can go. And um, I'm gonna suggest that you check out the Trail Conference website. They have trail alerts on what's open or what's closed. And they also have a, something that says hikes uh, and trails less traveled. So if you happen to have a particular hike or trail that you like and you feel that it's, since it's less traveled, and not too many people, I will have my email address at the end. You can drop me a line and tell me about it. Right now, I don't have time to write up 
hikes to put on the web, but um, I can always pass that along to somebody who could write it up and we would get it onto the website. So I need to, everybody needs a friendly reminder from time to time. And I figured this dude that I happened to see um, would make you smile a little bit. He didn't remind me to stay local and he didn't say to go early or late in the day. Nor, it, we were not there on a weekend, so um, that is correct. But uh, when I saw him, I thought, oh, this is too good to pass by. And he was perfectly happy to ham it up and give me a picture. So this is true no matter what, whether it's um, COVID-19 time or any other time. Less well-known parks have an advantage. You have a nice time by yourself and you are not in, um, degrading the environment because you're one of many feet that are going along the trails. Small parks have limited parking. So if you see there isn't room, you don't go in. That's true for large parks as well. But for small parks, just having another car in there, the chances are you're seeing somebody are slim. I suggest that you check a park map to see if trails diverge as soon as you get into a parking lot. That means you're not going to see as many people. Um, what we have noticed when we go out for a walk, that if you have an entrance road that's paved, there are a lot of people who are walking on that now because they're not used to the woods. If you see some a lady with a big pocketbook on her shoulder, you know she's not going to come out once again very often after um, the restrictions on uh, being outside, um, you know, being places is lifted. So um, that's a hazard in, se in several ways. Um, if you've ever driven into a park and had to contend with that, it's really annoying. The other thing is to look at the Google Maps for the relative size of the parking lot to the miles of trails. And the parking lots that are small are small for a reason, because the park can't handle a lot of people. Uh, Mianus River Gorge, which is in the very eastern portion of the county, and it was the Nature Center's, Nature Conservancy's first park or preserve that they um, protected. Its trails all, they're linear. You go in on one and you can come out on the other. It has a big parking lot. No, thanks. I'm not going to go there. Even if they would put up one-way signs, I'm not going there because the degradation to the environment as you start walking in, because everybody walks in that way. By the way, it is very pretty. Okay, so some, I'm going to point out some lesser known places that are around here that people might enjoy going and walking, especially if you live nearby. This one is Nichols Preserve, and it's over near Armonk. And the odd thing is you have to go into Connecticut in order to get to it. Armonk's on the east side of the um, of 684. Hilltop Hanover Farm is located in the same town I'm in. Um, its entrance trail is a little longer than um, most but once you're in, once you're you have some loop trails that you can go on so that people can disperse. So there are three uh, in North Salem. There are three uh, parks um, that are close by. They're owned by the Nature Conservancy. The one on the left is Mount Holly Sanctuary. Grierson is the one that has the beautiful orange fungi, and Yarrow has the somewhat dead tree. They're located en close enough that you can, if you can't get in one, the other one you might be able to. And again, they have small parking lots. They're not well known. And anytime I've been there, I've never seen anybody else. Merstead is a county park for Westchester. It's located just a little bit east of Mount Kisco and quite near 684. You have beautiful fields to walk through, which is nice. And you also have woodland area. When you hike, have an alternate plan. If the parking lot is crowded, find another park. Just that simple. By the way, that's the trail crew that we do work with. This was taken last, oh, a year ago. 
Uh, and I thought they were made a nice congregating group of not, don't do that. Um, since you're looking for alternates, I'd mentioned earlier Butler Sanctuary. Um, highly recommend it. And if it's, if it's full, go to Westmoreland and that's, and go look out, find that little water, itty bitty waterfall that I have the picture there on the right. Or visit Meyer, which has a beautiful fields during the summer. Um, Meyer has two entrances. They are connected um, and you can disperse uh, from either of them from the park fairly quickly from the parking lot. Anglefly is located in Somers off of Route 100, easily um, reached by Route 6, uh, Interstate 684. Um, that tree, um, I felt its knobby knees and um, feet that looked like they belonged on an ogre was worth um, pointing out to people as they went by that on a trail. And Mescoot Farm is on uh, Route 100. Uh, fairly near to Anglefly, um, beautiful farmland, and they have a, a, a very large oak tree that's on one of the paths. Another combination, if you can't get into one, try the other. Mountain Lakes has a great, a wide road, but there's trails that cut across it. Um, it's parking. Um, they have several smaller lots. But there's plenty of space there uh, that you can spread out. Baxter is all fields. Um, we once we were there, um, we could see people. There's about space along the road in a couple parking areas for maybe 15 cars. But you see people at a distance. You don't really pass many of them as you wander through the farm fields on mowed paths. Taxter Ridge um, is near Glenville Woods. Both are small, but um, not that well known. And you can, you can head out there and have a good hike. Taxter Ridge, that's the uh, chimney from uh, the estate that Jay Gould's daughter had and the pond there in Glenville Woods. So using an alternate entrance is important um, sometimes. It disperses people. Anglefly has their main entrance plus these other two that I mentioned. Sylvan Glen has an entrance on Stony Street as well as one off of Morris Lane on the opposite side of the park. And Tarrytown Lakes has Andre Brook Trail as well as uh, the parking areas on the old rail bed. Blue Mountain is interesting. People either love it or hate it. It's, it has a lot of mountain biking trails on it. Um, they are twisty and windy and up steep stuff, but it also had wide woods roads that had been built by the Civilian Conservation Corps. But what's nice, it has four entrances, so you can easily disperse throughout the park. Uh, what you're seeing there are some drill holes in rocks that are along um, a road. Montreux Station Road, which is closed, and it's great because it's fairly wide. Britton Brook is located in Croton. It's tucked away. You wouldn't find it unless you knew about it. It's managed by the Sawmill River Audubon property, but it has two entrances. One takes six cars, the other takes four. <laughs> And as soon as you get, you are at the parking lot, the main, the quote main parking lot, you end up uh, being able to disperse fairly quickly because there are two trails out of it, and they disperse fairly quickly um, once they get further into the uh, preserve. Hearts Gravel Wilderness Area is sort of in the heart of Westchester County. It's in Pleasantville. There again, two entrances. People don't know about one that's on Hearts Gravel Road. Three cars can get there and you have a half mile walk and no one's along it. Irvington Woods also has multiple trails at parking lots. They also like Blue Mountain allow mountain bikes. Westchester Wilderness Walk is not well known at all. Um, it's more of a rugged place. Um, 
The two entrances have trails that diverge. There is marginal parking on the edge and marginal parking uh, in the parking lots. So that keeps the number of people there down. Rockefeller has had a lot of problem with too many people and get, keeping people socially distant. But if you go to the area east of 448, you're not going to see as many people. And I highly recommend, and you can get a really long hike in uh, using one of the trail conferences, new maps, uh, by parking in the commuter lot that's off of Route 117, and then walking in um, to this area. T-Town has been overrun to the point they've had to call the cops out to keep people from parking along the road. Um, but Cliffdale Farm, which is part of T-Town, is not as well known. And you know, you're not gonna see the snow on the fields <laughs> right now, but um, there's plenty of hiking there and it has a reasonable size parking lot. So I'd like to say, no matter which way you look, enjoy walking in Westchester. I'd also like to point out that volunteers have helped in, the in a variety of ways uh, to produce the book. Um, I'm sorry about the grammatical mistake at the second bullet. <laughs> taken, it's baked instead of taken. Um, but these are things that volunteers have done. And without my core of volunteers checking things, and one of them happens to be on my uh, listening in this evening. Thank you, Lynn, for helping check. Um, They've done a variety of things, and there's still a little bit more that can be, that needs to be done. Not probably for another month before I need somebody. Um, some of it's just plain grunt work, but um, the uh, taking pictures has been important. And as you can see there, the geese are more interested in this uh, kids taking a. Um, he might have some bread for us, but he's the right size to produce a uh, stale bread. But he's more interested in taking his picture. So if you have additional questions, you can contact us at wjdhikes at gmail.com. We'd be glad to hear from you. Um, if you have particular questions about a trail or you'd like to let me know about one that you really like, um, please do. So uh, I guess at this point, I'll ask Walt if there are any more questions have turned in. I think it showed up in the chat yet. Yeah. You're a silent bunch, guys. <laughs> so I'm gonna turn it over to Jeremy. Yeah, so uh, thanks everyone for, for joining in. If you have a question, you can use that uh, chat to, um, to ask it. I'm also gonna put up one last uh, uh, quick poll to see what you thought about, uh, uh, about this and hope you guys uh, learned a little bit about either the book uh, that will be coming out later. Um, or about trails and, and parks in Westchester if you're if you haven't been familiar with it and uh, yeah thanks again make sure you write down that that uh, that email address from from Jane and uh, we'll also be following up with with a, a follow-up email uh, later on as well so um, with that oh, there's a there is one question came in um, Jane what is your favorite trail I am going to punt on that one. Okay. People ask me that all the time. From the time the book came out to even now. The answer is I like to think of West Ch the trails and parks in Westchester like a giant fruit salad. You can have blueberries, raspberries, peaches. You can have watermelon. You can have pineapple. So no matter what size you want or what flavor, you can find something to suit you. But I will tell you, I happen to really like Sylvan Glen because I love the history that's associated with it. And it's just up the street from where I live. And as one of my daughters said, um, when she was over there, this was about five years ago, why didn't we know about this park when we were growing up? It wasn't a park. And when you're in high school, you're not really interested in the park that's up the hill that's not really developed at all. So um, the answer is, I love, I love Sylvan Glen Park. 
but I love lots of other places in Westchester. So, any other questions? Yeah, so a, yes. a question. Oh, go, go ahead, Cindy. Go ahead. Uh, do, you, do you two lead hikes? Um, yes and no. We have done I mean, so for, in for the, like small for small groups is what I'm talking about. You're talking to people who are in their 70s and their 80s, and we're not as fit as we used to be. Okay. So we're slower. I definitely lead hikes that are in Sylvan Glen that are interpretive hikes. We do that fairly regularly. Uh -huh. And I love to take people on the Mahansic Trailway into FDR. Mm -hmm. Will I go up Breakneck Ridge again? I don't think so. Uh -huh. <laughs> okay. We have, if you contact me and you have a small group, I would be happy once we're allowed to do stuff like that to take people out. But I, both of us prefer to do interpretation on a hike, not just to run, run through the woods. So uh -huh. I, hope that answer, I hope that answers your question. Thank you. Okay. Great, thanks. Uh, another question. Um, how many of these parks does the trail conference uh, maintain trails at? Okay, I should have had that answer off of my head. Um, I know in Yorktown where I live, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, eight, tra eight parks there. I think it's over, it's about 25 parks that they uh, maintain. Um, one, the county parks are like, uh, Mountain Lakes, Ward Pound Ridge, um, portion of Barcliffe Peekskill, uh, George's Island. So we're all we're all over the northern part of the county, and we have some down a little bit low, um, further south. Uh, Taxter Ridge is the further south that we go, and that's just by the. Oh, I'm yeah. You know, Cranberry Lake is a little further south, so um, uh, we have working relationships with. Um, Lots of partners, uh, state, nonprofit, uh, county, um, and uh, three towns uh, town of Greenberg, Lewisboro, and Yorktown. Oh, no, four, Cortland. So, um, great, thanks. Okay. Uh, another question here um, Are there any entrance or parking fees for out of state hikers? Um, the county parks charge a parking fee for some parks. Um, that might be something because, uh, whether it's in, um, season or not, like for instance, Ward Pound Ridge charges. Um, you can get a reduced fee if you're a county resident. Um, there's no, no difference if you come out of state or in state for that. That was a good question. But there's some places that do charge fees and there are also places along the sound and along the river that are, are closed to residents only. Uh, New Rochelle is particularly strict about that. Although I will say that during the winter, I've gone to some of their parks and had no problem parking there. But I certainly wouldn't go during the summer and they check, okay. Yorktown puts up signs saying residents only. They're not checking, I'll tell you that right now. There's no way they're gonna check. They just don't have, they don't have the resources and it's not good to sit somebody out there to, to check. <laughs> yeah, I don't know if you could hear Walt's remark. We have one, we have both computers up and his is, his is on complete mute. Did you hear his answer? I hope. Okay, and the one about, um, Yes, we are going to have a chart that says what parks allow dogs. Okay, uh, that is the that that in the color the new things with um, the third edition. Most, most almost all uh, require a leash. Um, but some, like for instance, Rockefeller will not um, dogs. They're very strict on um, enforcing the dogs on leash. Others are not so much. Okay, there's another question of. Which parks are best to see wildfires? Um, great question. Uh, last spring, Walt and I were in Leon Levy and some of the stuff that's in the southern part of the park were loaded with wildflowers. Unfortunately, Lewisboro has closed their parks because people weren't, uh, were parking on the roads, they were overcrowded. 
Um, you might call to Lewisboro to find out if it's open. I know that Butler, um, what they call the long trail that comes up from Byron Lake Road has Dutchman's Bridges and trout lilies on it. Um, moment. Right. Um, uh, open fields, a lot of them have uh, very good summer flowers in the open fields. Right. I was out this summer twice, no, three times um, uh, to, to Meyer and to Baxter. And it was absolutely phenomenal. You just wander through there and the flowers, there are butterflies, there's bees. It's really great because they don't mow, they only mow a path, they don't mow the field. Okay. I hope that answered your question, Nancy. Okay. Any other questions? It's all been good questions. I hope they've helped everybody else. Yeah, I think, think that's it. And, uh, and uh, good, good timing and, and thanks again, everyone, for, for, uh, for joining us. And yeah, we enjoyed care. having thanks, you. Thanks, Jane. We, thanks, Walt. Yeah. And thanks, Jeremy, for helping us. And thanks, everybody, for um, taking the time to find out about Walkable Westchester. Thank you. Thank yeah. you. Thank you very much. Yeah. Did you say the name of that park was Leon Levy that was closed? Yes, it's it's um it's Leon Levy. It's in the uh, most. It's closed for for uh, COVID. It'll it'll be open. Big oh, time. it's going to be open. Okay, oh, great. It's, it's normally open. It's just closed for COVID because it's had too much time. Okay, and that's that's a part that has a lot of wildflowers. Yes, you said we were yeah. there. I was. We were simply amazed at how many wildflowers there were. Um, if you email me, I can tell you which trail those were on. Okay. Okay. Thank you. So, all righty. Thanks for everybody for joining us. And stay safe, enjoy walking and hiking, and um, find some new trails to go to uh, get out at close to home. <laughs> okay.